So in this question, the student asked us to rewrite the following pseudocode with proper indentation. So for those of you that don't know what pseudocode is, pseudocode is like a plan or outline of what your code is going to do. And we often start with this plan or outline because we don't want to get worried about all the little details and specifics about the language we're using. We just want to plan out what the program's actually going to do. So sometimes pseudocode can be visual, like you'll see diagrams of boxes and lines connecting things, but oftentimes pseudocode can be text-based as you see below. So text-based pseudocode doesn't really follow any programming language syntax, but your teacher might have a syntax or a format they want you to write your text-based pseudocode in for their class. But really for text-based pseudocode, you just want to be able to hand this to someone and they can read it and understand what the program is going to do. So to start off with, we're going to copy the code and we're going to paste it in a new MATLAB file. So for the indentation rules, we're going to, every time we see an if, a for, a while, or a function block, we're going to start indenting the lines after it. So we can go down from the top. So we see our first if. So the next thing we're going to do is start indenting these lines. So now we have another if. So now the line after it is going to get an indentation from the first if, but also another indentation from this if. Now for else, it's a little tricky. We're going to do one indentation so that it lines up with this if, but it's not going to be indented a second time because it's showing kind of the structure of this if statement that if you do this, then do here, otherwise do this. So we're going to, after that, we indent it again, but then we're going to add another indentation because we're still kind of in this first if statement. And then finally, anytime you see an end, then you want to remove one of the indentations and go back. And then finally, this last end lines up with the first if statement, so it doesn't need any more indentation. It would remove this one that's here. So that's it for the indenting the pseudocode properly. But as a bonus, I want I wanted to show you guys how to convert this to proper MATLAB code. So we'll leave this how it is as our answer for the question. And in a new file, we'll paste it in and we'll show you how to make this run as a MATLAB program. So the first thing is MATLAB doesn't use any start keywords or anything like that for the beginning of the program. It just starts at line one. So we'll remove that. And the same thing, it doesn't stop at the end of the program using a keyword. It just stops when it gets to the last line. So we can put a semicolon on these if you want, and in some programming languages it's required. But in MATLAB, if you don't, it just prints it out in the output. And for now, there's no real reason that we have to put it there. Now, the point of pseudocode, when we get down to the third line, we'll see things like this, read Z. So this is saying we're going to do something, and it's probably reading a file or the internet or something, but it's getting a value for Z. And in pseudocode, we're not focused on the specifics of how that's done. We just say we do it. But now that this is actual MATLAB code, we need to tell the computer how to do that. So I'm going to create a function. And later on, when we figure out if this is coming from a file or the internet or some other course, we can fill in the details. So down here, I'm going to use the function keyword. And then we need our output equals the name of our function. We'll just call this read z. And then to end our function, we need an end line. And then the final thing is in this function, it's outputting a value z. So we need to give it a value. So in the future, we'll replace this with where we actually get z from. But for now, for testing, we can either put something like zero and we can replace it with different values if we want to test out different cases. But for this example, since uh, the conditions on Z 
are around it being less than or greater than 50, I think a good idea just for general testing is to use this rand i. And this is going to give us a random integer between these two values. So I'm going to do 0 and 100. And then it's a great idea to add a comment here to remind us later to implement reading z from its source. So finally, up here, we can use this function. And here in the code, they're using the lowercase z as the variable. So we're going to collect the output of our function in lowercase z. Now, for the if statements and the else and end, number one, we don't have end if. We just say end. And number two, these need to be in lowercase for MATLAB. So if, if, else, end, and end. And then now we need to save this. And we got our first error. Oh, that's right, these thens. So in MATLAB, we don't use then to say what we do after if. We just put it on the following lines. There's no need to add that. So now if we run it, we can see down here, z was 96, and x became 6, y became 6, and z was 12. If we keep running this, when z is over 50, we get 12. And when z is under 50, we get 1. And we can go through our code and analyze y. So y starts off at 0, and x starts off at 1. If z is bigger than 50, x becomes 6. And this statement is always going to be true when x is 6. So y is going to become 6. And then they'll add to 12 down here on this final line. And we skip this else. Otherwise, if z is less than 50, we still have 0 and 1 for, x, for y and x, and these just add to 1. So we can run this over and over, and as we get random values to test with z, we'll see different outputs down here. So that's the end of this tutorial, and I hope you learned a lot.